Let's see how we can add an enchantment in 1.21.1. 121 Minecraft modding courses available down below with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. All right, we found some back in Telegram and more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom enchantment to our Minecraft mod. Now, this, of course, has changed in 1.21 and above. And what we're going to see is how we can actually add this. Now, very importantly, the way to add this is via data gen. So once again, if you don't have data gen in your project, then the way that we're going to add this right now is not quite going to work. You will see the JSON file at the end. And yes, in theory, you can also simply add the custom JSON file there too. But, you know, in our case, we're going to go through the whole gamut here. So in the tutorial mode a package, we're going to right click a new package called enchantment. And there we'll need another new package and that's going to be the custom package and then first of all in the custom package a new java class called the lightning striker enchantment enchantment effect this is so difficult to write i've been writing enchantment for a <laughs> for a few times now it looks wrong anyway in the enchantment package we're going to have two new java classes as well that's going to be the mod enchantment effects class as well as the mod in enchantments class there we go that's going to be the three classes as always of course all of the code is also available down below i'm going to start with the lightning striker over here this is going to be a record so if we make this a record we simply have to add the parentheses right here basically this would be the constructor of this record but in our case we don't need to pass anything in it's going to implement the enchantment entity effect interface over here we're going to hover over this and implement the two methods that we need this is the apply and the codec method and there we go. For the codec method, we want a public static final map codec of type lightning striker enchantment effect. We we'll call this codec or caps. And this is equal to map codec dot unit passing in lightning striker enchantment effect colon colon new. And then we can simply put in the codec right here. And there we go. The apply method over here, that is the method that gets called when this particular enchantment effect is invoked, right? That means that when we have a, an enchantment, in our case, we're going to make a custom enchantment that invokes the lightning striker enchantment effect, and this anything in the apply method gets basically called. So what we're going to have is, we're going to say if i is equal to 1, i in this case is, by the way, the level of enchantment, right? So in this case, I actually want to rename this, so click on this, press shift f6, and I'm going to rename this to enchantment level i think that that is a little bit clearer in this case and if that is one then i want to spawn one lightning bolt so we're going to spawn one lightning bolt by doing entity type dot lightning bolt dot spawn passing in the server level passing in entity dot get on pause so basically the position that the entity is standing on the mob spawn type is going to be in this case triggered where is it it is right here triggered there you go and basically we can simply duplicate the whole if statement and we can say well if the level is two then i simply want to spawn two lightning bolts so very straightforward here in this case and there we go that is the entire enchantment effect over here of course if you have another effect that you want then i highly recommend you want number one click on this control h to see all of the different other effects that exist so for example you can run a function you can summon entities you have an explode effect so there are different kinds of effects already in place that you can basically add you can also of course make custom effects and additionally as well and that is going to be here so if we actually take a look at the tree we can actually continue to go in this is an enchantment location based effect and you can see there is really the enchantment entity effect is the like the big one here but there are a different other effects over here if we go into enchantment effects right here we uh, control left click or middle mouse button click on this we should be able to find the value effect there's also a value effect and in theory you can even make your own custom effects basically the entire thing that the entity effects are really is just a way of saying hey this method should get called when the when something happens with a particular enchantment the entire enchantment system has gotten a little bit more complicated that is definitely the case however once again uh, here i basically just want to show you how you can register this how we're going to make this particular enchantment work any implementation is up to you to basically well create and figure out so in the mod enchantment effects class here that is where we're going to well get the enchantment register so we're gonna have a public static final deferred register of type map codec of type question mark which extends the en enchantment entity effect yes this is the entity underscore enchantment underscore effects equal to a deferred register dot create registries dot enchantment entity effect type tutorial mod dot mod id i highly recommend 
you check out the description as all of the code is of course available in the GitHub repository. Where there is a deferred register, there is also a register method with an iEvent bus where we're going to be passing that event bus. And of course, this register method go to our tutorial mod class, our constructor over here, mod enchantment effects that register passing in the mod event bus. And there we go. And then we can register our custom effect over here. So this is going to be a public static final supplier of type map codec of type question mark extends enchantment entity effect this is going to be our lightning underscore striker equal to the entity enchantment effect that register the name here is lightning underscore striker and then the second parameter is simply going to be a codec or rather a supplier of a codec and the codec here is lightning striker effect that codec and there we go that's literally going to be it and that is the mod enchantment effects class done as well and we finally are left with the mod enchantments class. This is where we're going to have some interesting things. I'm just going to copy over the register method as it is basically always going to look like this. And what you will find is that this is a very similar method to the method that we've seen, for example, in the trim right here. Right. So this register method also has a bootstrap context, bootstrap context. And basically, yes, this is the well, basic template, so to speak, on a method or with a method or a class rather that is using data gen. So in this case, what we're going to need is, of course, a resource key of enchantment. There we go. It's going to be our lightning underscore striker striker. There we go. Equal to resource key dot create. This is going to be registries, registries dot enchantment. And then the second parameter is a resource location from namespace and path to toil mod dot mod ID. And of course, lightning underscore striker over here. There we go. And then we have in the mod enchantments class a public static void bootstrap method bootstrap method with a bootstrap context of type enchantment. This is going to be our context here. And this is what we're going to need. Now we're going to need two things here. There's going to be a var enchantments because we need to basically be able to use other enchantments. So enchantments, there you go. Equal to context.lookup registries.enchantments or enchantment. Then a var items because we want to basically refer to items. So context.lookup registries 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 how this is written there we go this is how it's written that items and then we could call the register method passing in the context passing in the lightning striker resource key and then calling enchantment that enchantment passing in enchantment that definition we can take a look at the definition class over here or yeah basically the enchantment definition class and you can see this is also a record and we have supported items we have primary items a weight a max level, a min cost, a max cost, an anvil cost, and then what slot this goes into. So first of all, the primary items, or rather the actually the supported items, is going to be items that get or throw, get or throw, item tags that, and this is going to be the weapon enchantable. So basically every weapon enchantable can be enchanted with the lightning striker. Items that get or throw item tags dot sword enchantable are those that are the primary targets the weight five is just how often this is going to be displayed or the, you know how, how basically often it occurs max level is going to be two in this case we then have an enchantment that dynamic cost which is going to be let's say five and then seven per level or something like that and then another enchantment dynamic cost which is going to be 25 and 8 or 7 whatever uh, once again when it comes to any of the numbers always just play around with this because you will have to change the numbers anyway or make them configurable something like that so highly recommended to just play around with this a little bit and then you should be good to go and the cost is going to be two and then we have the equipment slot group of a main hand here after the second closing parentheses we now want to add a couple of other things the first one is the exclusive width so that means that we basically can select different holder sets over here of enchantments that this is going to be exclusive with. So basically, if you have a certain enchantment, then you can no longer have a certain other group of enchantments, something like that. And that is going to be enchantments that get or throw enchantment tags that and this is going to be the damage exclusive in this case. So we, what we can, for example, take a look at is the damage exclusive over here in the enchantments over here. You can see that the same thing would happen, for example, with sharpness, right? So I, I, I believe the way that it works is like sharpness doesn't work together with smite or something like that. So that is basically sort of the idea in the exclusivity here. And we also want to say this works with an effect and the effect that it works with is the enchantment effect components that post attack. So this happens after the attack has occurred with an attacker as well as a victim. And then we're going to have a new lightning striker enchantment effect. And we need another closing parenthesis. And there we go. 
Once again, highly recommended to take a look at the GitHub repository down below to see all of the code there in action and basically like how it how it, everything is written. But that is the basic way that we can register a particular enchantment. And once we have this, we then want to go to our data gen over here to the data pack provider. And then here we want to add another one. So this is going to be the, the dot add registries registries dot enchantment mod enchantments colon colon bootstrap there we go and with this done we have everything that we're going to need except for two things in the resources down here the first one is going to be the translation so basically enchantment dot tutorial mod dot lightning striker and the different levels it adds on its own so that's very straightforward and then we need another thing and that is a tag so under data minecraft tags we want to create a new folder called enchantment making sure we write this correctly very easy to make a typo here and then inside of the enchantment folder a new file called in underscore enchanting underscore table dot json and then we want to basically simply add this over here basic tag in this case that refers to the enchantment because if we don't have this then our custom enchantment is actually not going to show up in the enchanting table and of course we would rather like this. So let's run the data gen first to actually generate the JSON file. We're going to be able to see this in just a second here. So let this let the data gen run through and then we can take a look at the JSON file as well. There we go. One file written and we can see the enchantment folder has been added here. Lightning striker, lightning underscore striker JSON. And we can see this is the whole craziness over here. And yeah, of course, once again, you can write this JSON file manually as well. That is totally up to you. However, do note that, of course, when it comes to the effect itself, if you don't have an effect that already exists, then you need to register your custom effect. So very important that you, you know, keep that in mind. Other than that, that is basically all we need to do. So I would say let's jump into the game and see if it works. All right, friends, I'm back in Minecraft. And let's just take a look if we can find our custom enchantment over here. Now, of course, it sometimes might take a while until we can actually find it because, well, it is random, but there we go. Lightning Striker 2, we have it. And also, if we were to search for it, we can see that Lightning Striker over here exists as enchanted books. And of course, we could then add this to our different swords over here as well. That would all work totally fine. And once we have it, well, where is some... Oh, look at this. There's a couple of sheep here. Well, no longer. Here we go. Custom enchantments added to Minecraft. Awesome. And that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll talk about custom crops. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.